Palmer's alive today presents. Zinger. Zayer was founded in 1919 as the New England Trading Company in Boston, Massachusetts by brothers Max and Morris Feldberg, an underwear and hosiery wholesaler the company began as a supplier to full-line department stores and specialty shops. Ten years later the brothers launched their first retail operation Bell Hosiery Shops, later shortened to Bell Shops. Within a few years Bell Shops expanded beyond underwear and hosiery into women's specialty stores competing with such chains as Learner Shops and Three Sisters. By the end of World War II there were nearly 30 Bell Shops in the New England area. In 1946 the company doubled its number of stores with its buyout of New York City-based Nugent's another women's specialty store chain. With its store base in New York, Pennsylvania, Delaware, New Jersey and Washington DC, Nugent's was a natural extension of the company's market area with almost no overlap. By the early 1950s company sales leveled off and it became clear to the Feldbergs that drastic changes were needed for their business to remain viable. The Bell Shop slash Nugent stores were suffering due to the decline of downtown business districts and to the rise of mill discount store operations. With the family's second generation Stanley H. Feldberg, son of Max, and Sumner A. Feldberg, son of Morris, now in positions of responsibility the company began to explore options putting considerable effort into studying the hugely successful mill stores. Mill stores began operation in closed empty textile mills available at dirt cheap rents selling mainly clothing linens and other soft lines. As these companies became more successful they began to build their own new stores either freestanding or in shopping centers allowing greater visibility along with the benefits of custom built facilities. Having settled on discounting as the logical direction in which to take their company the Feldbergs decided to forego the mill building route and launch with a newly constructed store when the opportunity presented itself. That opportunity came in late 1955 when Stop and Shop Incorporated approached them with an offer to build them a store alongside a new Stop and Shop supermarket to be constructed in Hyannis, Massachusetts. In June 1956 the Hyannis Zayer opened with 5,000 square feet of retail space. The store was soon expanded to 7,500 and then 10,000 square feet and was replaced in 1962 with a 45,000 square foot unit directly behind it. A second Zayer store opened in September 1956 in the Roslindale section of Boston a much larger 39,000 square feet. Within a few years Zayer stores would average 70,000 to 90,000 square feet. After a careful period of initial growth through the end of the 1950s Zayer began to expand rapidly. Only six Zayer stores operated in 1959 approximately the same time that Zayer's volume reached that of the Bell Shop slash Nugent stores. By 1962 there were 27 Zayer stores open with 10 to 20 new ones added annually for many years afterward. That same year Zayer Corp became a public company and began trading on the New York Stock Exchange. Beginning in 1960 Zayer embarked on a program to open stores in major markets all across the eastern half of the U.S. with a presence in nearly every state east of the Mississippi River by the middle of the decade. The company opened new stores in clusters so as to maximize brand presence and advertising efficiency. By the end of 1966 Zayer had 92 stores with major concentrations in the Chicago metropolitan area Miami and its home turf of Boston. Medium-sized Zayer markets at the time included Washington, D.C. Pittsburgh, Atlanta, Cleveland, Columbus, Jacksonville, Tampa, and Providence. Some of this growth came through acquisition. Several locations in Washington, D.C., Chicago, and Florida were acquired through the bankruptcies of discount chains Towers Marts in 1963 and Consumers Mart of America in 1965. In December 1966, Zayer bought out Northern Enterprises, Incorporated owner of four shoppers city stores in Duluth, Minneapolis, and St. Paul, Minnesota, rebranding the stores as Zayer Shoppers City Stores. Thank you. 
In Zader's early years the store's product mix leaned heavily toward soft lines due to the Feldbergs experience in fashion gained through years of operating the Bell Shop slash Nugent stores. As the 60s progressed Zader's product offering more closely resembled that of a typical discount store with toys sporting goods records books health and beauty products and much more. A number of these departments were leased out to concessionaires during Zader's first decade including linens, greeting cards candy and health and beauty items totaling nearly a third of Zader's store revenues. In the mid-1960s Zader bought out many of these firms leaving only a handful of departments as lease operations. Zader stores featured frequent flashing light 15-minute specials with live-slash-recorded public address announcements meant to build excitement and drive traffic to specific departments similar to Kmart's blue light specials. Zader's slogan in the 1960s was Fabulous Department Stores followed in the early 1970s with Compare You Can't Do Better Than Zader. Zader was one of only a few stores to remain open 24 hours a day during the weeks preceding Christmas each year. By the end of the 1960s Zayer Corp diversified into specialty retailing. Among Zayer's early acquisitions was the hit or miss chain and off-price chain specializing in upscale women's clothing. The first store which opened in Natick, Massachusetts in 1965 flourished and grew into a chain so quickly that within four years it attracted the attention of the much larger Zayer Corp. In 1969 Zayer Corp bought the hit or miss chain and began its exploration of the off-price fashion market. Zayer's timing could not have been better. During during the recession of the 1970s hit or misses results climbed so rapidly that Zayer Corp considered expanding its off-price upscale apparel merchandising. Zayer Corp first attempted to buy the Marshalls chain already established as a retailer of off-price apparel for the whole family. When that effort failed the company hired Bernard Van Camerata previously general merchandise manager of Marshalls to essentially create a Marshalls clone. In March 1977 he opened the first TJ Maxx in Auburn, Massachusetts quickly followed by a second store in nearby Worcester. The stores were an instant hit with customers including middle to upper middle income shoppers providing the perfect solution to the heightening demand for quality fashions at reasonable prices with an ever-changing fresh assortment. Within six years of that opening, Zayer Corp found another avenue to the off-price fashion market. In 1983 Chadwick's of Boston began to sell selected hit-or-miss items through mail-order catalogs. Hit-or-miss and Chadwick's crossover operations allowed customers to handle products before ordering and brought frequent buyers the convenience of home shopping. By the mid-1980s off-price specialty retailing had become important to Zayer Corp. Hit or Miss and TJ Maxx had brought in just 14% of the company's operating income in 1980. By the first half of 1983 these operations were producing nearly 45% of its income. At the same time however Zayer was renovating its discount department stores and expanding its product mix. In 1984 Zayer Corp introduced a new warehouse retail concept to the Northeast called BJ's Wholesale Club. The self-service cash and carry membership warehouse sells general merchandise and food at wholesale prices. The following year the company acquired Home Club Incorporated a chain of home improvement stores. While neither of these ventures was immediately profitable, it or Miss and TJ Maxx continued to thrive. In 1985 Zayer Corp purchased the former Gaylord store chain. However many of the new Zayer stores opened during the 1980s suffered from cluttered aisles and messy appearances. Zayer began to feature appearances from celebrities such as Sherman Hemsley and Robert Guillaume in grand reopenings of their major stores but even these events failed to improve their market share. By 1986 the number of hit or miss stores in the United States had reached 420 and sales had climbed to $300 million. Some 70% of its inventory was made up of nationally known brands. The remaining 30% consisted of standard apparel, produced by hit or miss under its own private label. With such a merchandise mix hit or miss was able to sell current fashions at 20-50% to 50 less than most specialty stores. 
In 1986 profits of the Zayer chain targeting low to middle income customers dropped although TJ Maxx hit or miss and Chadwick's of Boston targeting mid to higher income customers continued to grow. That year alone Zayer Corp opened 35 more TJ Maxx stores and 31 new hit or miss stores. Zayer Corp's off-price retailing chains had become so successful that by 1987 Zayer thought it prudent to organize them under one name and grant them autonomy from the decreasingly prosperous parent company. In June 1987 just 10 years after TJ Maxx opened its first store, the TJX Companies Incorporated was established as a subsidiary of Zayer Corp, with Camerata serving as president and CEO. It sold 9.35 million shares of common stock in its initial public offering, Zayer Corp owned 83% of the subsidiary. During this time Zayer faced several challenges. In the first half of 1988 Zayer stores had operating losses of $69 million on sales of $1.4 billion. Observers blame technological inferiority for maintenance inappropriate pricing and inventory pileups and Zayer appeared ripe for takeover. Throughout all this however the TJX company's subsidiary continued to yield a profit. In October 1988 Zayer Corp decided to focus its energies on TJX. It sold the entire chain of nearly 400 Zayer stores to Ames Department Stores Inc. In exchange the company received $431.4 million in cash a receivable note and what was then valued at $140 million of Ames Cumulative Senior Convertible Preferred Stock. The company continued to home in on its profitable new core business, selling unrelated operations. In June 1989 it spun off its warehouse club division Waven Incorporated, which owned BJ's Wholesale Club and Home Club. The same month Zayer Corp acquired the outstanding minority interest in TJX. On the day it acquired the minority interest the company merged with TJX and changed its name from Zayer Corp to the TJX Companies Inc. The newly named company headed by Camerata began trading on the New York Stock Exchange. The company's transition into an off-price fashion business was relatively smooth but the Ames preferred stock it received in the Zayer transaction was a problem. While the stock was entitled to annual dividends Ames had the option of paying the first four semi-annual dividends with more Ames preferred stock rather than cash an option that Ames exercised for each of the payments it had met. The value of Ames preferred stock was dubious however as Ames was closing stores and experiencing losses. In April 1990 TJX established a $185 million reserve against its Ames preferred stock and contingent lease liabilities on former Zayer stores as a result of Ames' announcement of continued poor performance. That same month Ames filed for protection from creditors under Chapter 11 of the U.S. Bankruptcy Code. By 1990 all Zayer stores had been closed or converted into Ames stores and what had once been America's fifth largest discount retailer was no more. Notebook paper. If you're the kind Notebook of shopper paper. who goes to Notebook Zayer paper. with only one Notebook thing in mind. Notebook paper. Notebook. This one's pretty, honey. I like that one, mommy. You could be missing out on some great back-to-school looks. Notebook paper. Notebook these paper. prices are Notebook great, paper. Alice. Dad, I've got to have these high tops. What's wrong with low tops? They're like yours, Dad. Notebook paper. Sooner or later, <gasps> it'll you. hit you. So, why wait? Get a good look at there. If you have any fond memories, please indicate it at the comments below. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like.